everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel, thanks for dropping by. Now, for this soap, I'm doing all Mica Mama colours. Now, you've probably seen me using Micas from Mica Mama in the past because they're one of my favourite colourant suppliers. And we are actually really lucky in the UK to have such a great supplier of really premium Micas. Now, Mike and Mama contacted me and they said, would I fancy trying some new colours for them and perhaps doing a video or trying some colours. I don't know if they're new to their range, I must admit. And I said, oh yes, I would. Because the thing with me is, and the way our assessments work, is I tend to have a group of colours that I use again and again and again. And I tend to not really look out for new colours because I'm sort of happy with the set that I've got. So I said to them, go on, randomly send me some new colours. I'm not going to pick them, you can choose. And they sent me this lovely selection. This is Caribou Blue, this first one. This one is Seville Orange. This is Prussian Violet. And this is Scarlet Diva Red. And I thought they were so beautiful. Um, I must admit, it's made me think, oh, perhaps I should think about looking at new micas but I thought they were so lovely and I also thought they looked good together so I'm going to try and use them all up in well not obviously not use all of this up because that would be a lot of mica wouldn't it I'm going to use each one of these in a soap together I'm, I'm going to add one more mica where's it gone here we go one that I already own my favorite yellow sunshine yellow also from my Mama. So I'm going to pop that into the mix as well. Now, I'm not going to muck around with these micas. I'm just going to literally use them at my normal usage rate that I use micas at. So I'm not going to try and mix them with anything because I just want to see what happens to them, what colours they come out with. I'm pretty sure they're going to come out looking beautiful like they do in the packets because that's my Mama for you. So let's go and pop these into a soap. Now for this soap I'm going to do a column pour but one of the things I don't like about column pours is how they get sometimes when you keep pouring and pouring they get really scrunched up at the edges where all the soap bunches up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a layer first and then a thinner column pour on top. So I'm just going to do a solid colour for my first base. So I'm going to use that beautiful Scarlet Diva Red Mica. that straight into my oils because I'm just doing a solid colour so that will be fine. Okay so let's get that mixed in with the oils. Actually I'm going to give it a stir first just so I can burp my stick blender and not get air bubbles. Okay so this is just my oils in here. In fact, I'm just going to stir that like that and then I'm not going to blend the oils here. Let's get my lye solution. And sodium lactate. Now the fragrance oil I'm using is Raspberry Lemonade from Nature's Garden and the reason I've chosen this is because as I'm doing a column pour I need something that's slow moving and also because I want to see what these colours are like I need something that's non-discolouring as well so this fits both of those bills very nicely and also it smells really lovely. Now 
Now, because this is a slow moving fragrance, it will take a little while for this first layer to set up enough, but that's fine. I can just wait and go and do something else. Okay, so obviously doing this in a slab mould, and this is my slab mould from Custom Craft Tools. So I'm just going to go in and pour this bottom layer on and then just leave it till it's firm enough to hold the second layer. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that and then we'll come back when that's set up. Whilst this layer over here was setting up, and it's pretty set up now, as you can see, I've dispersed those micas in some oil. I've just poured a little bit of oil off of my batch oils, but you could use some extra olive oil or something if you wanted. As long as you don't go mad, that'll just increase your super fat a little bit, but I just use a bit from my batch. So those are all nicely dispersed and ready to go. So here are all the rest of my oils and I'm going to mix them all up in one go. This is my lye and my sodium lactate. Just pouring in nice and slowly over my spatula to minimise any bubbles going in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh this now before I get blending or anything just so I know how much I need to split out when I divide it between my colours. So I'm just going to pop and do that and then I'll come back. Now it's really important for our column pour that we keep everything lovely and fluid. So I'm not going to blend this very much at all because it's going to take me a little while to get those colours mixed in. Okay, that's going to do me, it's just a tiny bit. And all I'm really trying to do there is just make sure that oils and lye are thoroughly mixed. Now it's not even emulsified yet, so what I need to make sure is as I split it out, I need to ensure that I give it a stir each time. So here are all our beautiful colours, well they will be when I've stirred them in, let's get them stirred in. This was the, oh, I don't remember the names, the Caribou Blue, this was the Prussian Violet, this Scarlet Diva, let me just check my name, yep Scarlet Diva, that's the one that I did the base in as well, sort of a nice peachy red, it's really lovely colour. This is my good old sunshine yellow <laughs> that I use in pretty well, well all my soaps that I need yellow for. And then this was the, hmm, I can't remember, ah, Seville Orange, there we go. There, so those are looking pretty good. That red is starting to actually look like a, a really quite true le red. Look at the colour of that compared to my spatula. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. You quite often find me red, you need to put quite a bit of mica in. So this may not be enough to give it a true red, but I'm not necessarily after a true red here. But that'll be really interesting because look at that compared to the red of my spatula. At the moment, I use the terracotta red again from my Kamama, and that gives a really nice red. So there may now be two reds that are really good reds and that would be so exciting wouldn't it because red is a tricky old colour. Okay so let's get our fragrance oil in. Now same obviously fragrance oil as before. Make 
make sure if you're adding fragrance oil to a number of pots, you don't just leave this fragrance oil sitting in a blob in one of your colours. Try and just get them all mixed in as much as you can. It's very tempting and you often see a lot of people divide out their fragrance oil and then mix each colour fully. You need to get it, get it mixing in quickly. Right, I'm just going to check that these are emulsified and if they are, I'm going to start my pour. Now if you've not seen before, how I normally check for emulsion is, you can obviously check it on your stick blender but I'm not using one for this. I tend to just let the soap go up the side of a jug and then just leave it for about a minute or so and you'll see if the soap starts to split apart. If it doesn't, then you know it's nicely emulsified. So, right, here's our base. Let's put this ideally in the middle. Yeah, that looks sort of like the middle of there. So I'm going to put my bottle. Okay, so I'm just going to get this poured. to tip over and he made me grab it and <laughs> flick it up over there but hopefully as we do our swirl let's see if we can see what we can get Okay, 
now that middle bit will always oops, be a bit muddled, but that tends to be just the very top that gets muddled. I'm just going to give that a little bang down and then we'll just add a bit more of that soap to correct that middle. And to finish off the rest of the soap. So there we are. Let's leave that overnight then, put it through gel and we'll see what those colours look like tomorrow. Here we are with our soap the next day. So let's get it chopped up. I'm pleased with those colours. I think they've held pretty true. As I say, there was our Prussian Violet, so that's pretty good. My Caribou Blue, looking pretty good. The Seville orange, that is a little duller, but that's really common with oranges. Quite often with an orange or a yellow, I will go up to sort of 0.8% of my oils as colour or even up to 1%. And I tend to find that with most oranges and yellows. I did this at 0.6 just to see, and that's how I always test colours at a standard start so I've always got a common base for all of them so I think if I use this at 0.8 or even 1% which is what I do with other oranges then I think that would give you just that colour the red is really interesting I've not got a lot of it in the top here but I think this is the one that possibly looks a little least like the packet but in a good way I do think that's a beautiful red remember I put the red in the bottom and this definitely is coming out as a nice actual red red. Let's get that spatula again that I did with the mixing up. So again, that's not far off. And I do always find with red, you know, if you use any of the reds, you know, even like a lot of people use trial by fire and whatever, and you have to use them at quite a high rate. And again, I use this at 0.6%. I think at, at sort of up 0.8 and 1%, it would actually really give you that good, good red. But to be honest, it's, it's pretty good. It's a, it's a slightly paler version of that, but it's not too bricky and it's not too pinky. So I do think that red is, is quite exciting. So that's for us in the UK, or if you're going to ship from overseas to where you are, that's two reds um, from Mike and Mama that are both really great reds. And I know reds for soap are difficult. So this one, the Scarlet Diva, and the other one that I use at the moment is the Terracotta Red. Both give you really lovely reds. Right, let's get this cut up, shall we? interesting is because when you cut a soap that's done in a slab mold it's always I wouldn't say boring but you don't get the reveal do you like you do in a loaf mold but I do think with something like this type of design you do still get a nice pattern on the side of the bars
what we've got. I always think these types of swirls are fascinating because each bar is slightly different. Look at that. You get some really cool designs and I do like that where we've got the solid base and then this unusual design up the side. Oh, look at that one. <laughs> That's a really cool one, isn't it? This was that middle one. So you can see there's a slightly different pattern there in the middle with that little ring going round it. Very cool around the sides. And I always think with this sort of thing, they actually almost look better, I think, when they're cut into bars rather than just seeing the whole pattern overall. I do think they look really cool. And then, as normal, I'll leave you with a final photo of the soap. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy soaping!